every time someone would say Abby Girl, I just get like a really weird feeling. And I literally just felt like, does everyone feel like this when their names get called out? If that makes sense. Like, this can't just be me. Surely. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> I moved to Bermondsey when I was four with my younger sister, my mum and my dad. I think 2000 or some, somewhere around that time. My dad being a pastor, just it was almost like I couldn't express myself because I was very well known in the area and like, a lot of people knew me from church and a lot of people knew me to be the pastor's child and stuff like that. So it wasn't like I could express who I really was. I just had to kind of keep a, a low profile. <laughs> Every time I go to Bermondsey, um, you literally hear Abigail or you hear Abby and you'll still hear that when you go back there and it's just dead, it's just dead. I had to get Quay from there, like. At this point, I just felt overwhelmed and like a lot of my life was kind of pointed in a direction that I wasn't really happy with, but I just didn't see who I was as a person. Like I didn't really have like a idea of what I could be or who I could be or anything like that. It was just like I was a mess. There's just a lot of pressure. There's just a lot of pressure. I've never identified myself as a trans guy or transsexual or anything that begins with T or... It's like I've always identified myself as like straight man dem or straight male. I feel like no matter what anyone tells me, it's, it's made me the man I am today. Like, no matter if it's, it looks physical or not, like, no matter what anyone else says about it, I'm just gonna stay true to myself and be me and, yeah, just be mandem. <laughs> it's just stay real to who you are, just be yourself and just, just continue your own journey no matter what anyone else says. You're here to live your journey, so it's your journey. You live your journey. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs>